Okay, welcome back. In this lesson then, we're taking a look at CSS syntax. In other words, how do we actually write CSS? So on the page in, I've just got a H2 that says DevDreamer and then a paragraph element here that says hello. Okay, let's go over to our style sheet. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, and we can write our styles here. So then, the CSS rule set consists of a selector and then a declaration block. The selector basically points to the HTML element that we want to style. So for example here, in order to style our H1, we just write H1, okay? This here is known as the selector. We're selecting the H1 element. Then we do space and then curly braces. Our declaration block for our H1 styling is contained within these curly braces. Now inside here, inside a declaration block, we have two things that we need. We need a property and then a value. The property is basically the thing we want to change or style and the value is the specific style. So for example, a property here we can use is color. So let's change the color of this text. So we just do color. And the way that we specify a value for color is we do a colon, space, and then here we can write our value. So let's go for the color we want for this H1 is going to be orange red. Let's choose orange red. And then finally, we need to end our declaration with a semicolon, like so. Hmm, that didn't work. Let's see why. Go into a HTML file. And ah, it's because I'm using H2, not a H1. Apologies about that. So here, let's change this to H2. And sure enough, you can see that this now turns into this orange red color here. Okay, so apologies about that, guys. I selected a H1, and there was no H1 in here. That's why nothing changed. So H2 is one we needed because this is a H2 tag. Okay, so let's just go over the syntax again. So we have a selector, so we're selecting a H2 tag. We then have a declaration block, which is surrounded by these curly braces here. And inside this then, we have a declaration where we're using a property and then a value of that property. And then we end that with a semicolon. So we do the property name, which we've got color in this instance, because we changed the color of this text. And then we then specify a value for this property by doing a colon, space, and then the value. And then we end our declaration here with a semicolon. Now you can actually do multiple declarations in the same block. So here I can just say, let's do font size and let's set this to 30 pixels. And with a semicolon, as you can see, that's changed. Now let's see what would happen if we didn't have this semicolon in here. As you can see, our styles have been removed. So these semicolons are used to define the end of our declaration. So here, that's one declaration. Okay, and then this is another declaration and we end it with a semicolon. Even if there's nothing that comes after it, you still really want to end it with a semicolon. Okay, so as you can see then, we can define multiple styles or declarations for our selector. In this case here, it's a H2. But imagine if we had a lot more than just two. This will start to get really difficult to read, right? They're also going to be on the same line. So what you can do, and what is really recommended, is to put your styles on new lines, like so. So we can do this. And we can move this down here. We can even move this down here like so. So this makes it a lot easier to actually read. So if you had more styles, let's just copy the effect. Now let's let's do some. Let's go for let's put a border around this. One pixel solid green. And we'll look at all our, all these CSS selectors and everything and declarations as we go through this series. Let's also do a background color on this of let's say sky blue okay so as you can see then the more declarations we have and the more things we're actually styling here it's actually a lot easier to read when you've got them underneath each other like this as opposed to all on one line let's take a look at another example by styling this uh, paragraph element here let's first of all select our paragraph element so it's p space and then do our curly braces and inside here then let's define our styles so what do we want to do with this let's say um Let's increase the font size to 50 pixels. Okay. Let's change the uh, color of this as well to, let's just say purple. And let's give this a text shadow of, let's say one pixel, one pixel, five pixels, gray. Let's increase this actually to three and three so that we can see it. 
Okay, and again, don't worry if you know what we're doing here. We'll look at this in more detail as we go through these lessons. Okay, so again then here what we did is we did a selector here. In this case, it was the P for paragraph element. So we selected the paragraph element, we did our curly braces, and inside that then we declared our styles. So we had font size, and then we did a colon, and then we specified the value for the font size, which is going to be 50 pixels, and we ended that with a semicolon. We then did color, colon, which was going to be purple, ended it with a semicolon, and finally we did text shadow, colon, and just very quickly all this means is we want this to be 3 pixels from the left in terms of the shadow, 3 pixels down, we want a 5 pixel blur, and we want the color of the shadow to be grey. But again, of course, we'll look at this in detail a bit later on. Okay, guys, so that is how to write our CSS. So we have a selector, curly braces to define our declaration block. And then inside that, then, we have our properties and values for those properties separated by colons. And we end our declaration with a semicolon. Okay, guys, so get practicing. Go ahead and do some other elements on the page and, and try and style them. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.